Okay, so a few of you have asked me if it would be possible to go through some examples. So what I'm going to start to do is start working through some of the R scripts that we have covered in lab to give you a little bit more of a detailed description of what's happening in the different lines of code. Um, so probably the best way for you to work through these videos is to have R and your R script open and then you can watch what I'm doing and listen to my description if you need additional help with anything. Okay, so the very first thing that I like to do whenever I open up R is I like to double check and make sure that I'm in the right working directory. Okay, so this is what those first few lines of code are doing. Here I'm going to load in ggplot2 just in case I feel like plotting anything. And as we are working through, I'm essentially running through every single line of the code. So we are working through week seven R script in this tutorial. All right, so as I'm saying here, these lines above are simply placed at the start of all of my R scripts. So you might wanna do something similar when you are writing up your R script so that you can call up the different packages that you'll need and also so that you can double check that you are in fact in the right working directory. All right, so here, like I said, this is an introduction to some of the statistical tests that we're going to be doing in R. We've covered some of these in lectures so far, and we are going to continue to cover these different tests in lab. So the first one up is the chi-square goodness of fit test. And what I did in this section was I tried to go through your textbook and use your textbook to pull out some interesting examples that we could look at. So here I am pulling in a file, bio 310, week 07 data, day of birth, and header equals t because there is a header in this data file, and I'm calling it day data. So you could call this anything that you felt like calling it. I'm simply choosing to call it day data. Here I'm calling up the column names just so that I have a nice convenient list of exactly what those are called because remember if I want to refer to these columns, I can do so by referring to their position um, within brackets, or I can simply use that string character and refer to them by name. So we'll be doing that a little bit more in a moment. All right, so this is a data frame with two different columns. And here, what we want to do is run a chi-square test, but we have to calculate some additional variables. So if you look at this example in your textbook, we are looking at the number of days in 1999 and there are more Fridays in 1999 than other days. So we cannot simply expect that the proportion of days is going to be, um, you know, seven days each, each um, a seventh of 365 days out of the year. All right, so um, we can do this in Excel and then load the file here, but oftentimes it's just going to be more straightforward to do some of these calculations in R. And as I mentioned to you guys as you were working through this in lab, um, we are building a data frame right here that looks very much like the data frame or, or the table rather in your textbook for this example. We are calculating out some variables that we don't actually need to calculate. So when you do these problems yourself, um, you, you don't need to calculate out all of the expected values like we're doing here. Okay, so here we are saying that day data, all rows, fifth column, is equal to day data, all rows, fourth column, times the sum of all the values in all the rows of column two in day data. Okay, so we're adding up the number here. So we could just divide by the number of days in the year, um, but instead I entered the formula. And if you look here, I don't know if it's going to click for you, but you see there are 52 days uh, except for Friday. There are 53 Fridays in 1999. All right, so now we have this data frame that has the observed and the expected values, and we can test whether or not they're going to differ using a chi-square test. Okay, we can refer to the specific columns that you have in your data frame. 
but I wanted to make it very clear in this file exactly what I was referring to. So in order to do that, I defined a new variable here, obs.days for observed days. Okay, and you'll see this is the observed days column. And then this here, this is uh, another way that you can assign a column to of day data to be expected days here. And then also I want to make a vector. This is what this is called when we have a single column of data, a vector for the proportion of days. So we have two vectors dealing with our expected values. We have the expected days vector and we have the um, proportion of days vector. Okay, so as you work through your code here, um, you will see we have a big fat error. And the error that we have here says that probabilities must sum to one. And if you look at what we have entered, the arguments that we've entered into this chi-square.test formula, we've told it to look at observed days and we want to compare that to the expected proportions, that's P, using expected days. But the problem is that our expected days, okay, so if we come over here and expected.days, oh, days with an S, we see those are not proportions. Okay, so we are expecting to have an error here. You were supposed to have an error here. If we instead run it again using our expected days divided by the sum of all of the expected days, or 365, here we get the right answer. Also, because we generated that vector called prop.days, we get the same answer if we use that vector. Okay? Remember, you can also save your results for that chi-square test. This is handy if you want to call those results back up. This is another neat trick if you store your results for the chi-square test, or for any statistical test for that matter. Um, you can call up different parts of them. So expected values is something that the chi-square test in R calculates for you. So a few steps ago when we calculated out these expected values, we didn't really need to calculate out those expected values because the test is going to do this for us. All we have to do is tell R what our expected proportions are. And that's typically the data that you're going to have more handy than the expected numbers. You usually have to take an additional arithmetic or, or um algebraic uh, formula to get to those expected values. But you can see here we can compare our expected values that we calculated to the expected values that the chi-square test generated and you see that they are the same. So this is handy if you're going to want to call up those values later. You can also call up statistics or parameters or the p-value for all of these different tests. Alright, so I will end this video here um, looking at the chi-square goodness of fit test and I will do another few videos walking through the other portions of the week 7 R script.